So in my life, I had a lot of problems, just like anybody else. I had social problems, professional problems, spiritual problems, interpersonal problems, emotional problems. So I'm going to talk about how I overcame all my life's problems in six minutes. <laughs> All right, so growing up, I was overly afraid of being taken advantage of. So I was always very careful when I was dealing with people. And it made me proud, it made me feel proud whenever I thought I was protecting myself from getting ripped off. But I was so concerned about myself that I couldn't see how this attitude could affect other people's dispositions. And what I learned from that was that whenever you give something to anybody else, because you're hoping, if you're hoping to get something where people are going to feel it. And if you're finding whatever you're giving to other people intrinsically rewarding, people can tell that difference. And so it's so important to offer your time and expectations without resources, without any expectations of return. It's a really, really subtle thing. Like you might not even be aware that you have an expectation of getting something back. But it's if it's 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 there, it can be there and you have to discover for yourself how rewarding the giving of your own time and resources can be. Because whenever you do that, right, you're actually you're using your power to make something about someone else's life better. Whatever that is. And when you do that, people are going to trust you. And because you're not subtly pressuring them about giving something back, that creates a space for them to appreciate you and freely give back to you. I'm like 10 seconds behind. Alright. This goes for like every kind of sharing of your resources. I'm going to skip stuff now. Right. This slide is about, for most of my life, I considered myself to be a nice person. But that didn't mean I was never called inconsiderate. So when that happened, actually, it was shocking and confusing for me. My problem was I wanted to be nice so people would accept me and think well of me, right? But what I didn't realize is that when I was so busy being nice, I wasn't paying attention to other people. So eventually, because people appreciate you noticing things about them, noticing where they are. Eventually, I learned what it means to be considerate. It doesn't mean being nice. It means that you consider other people, and you're mindful of them when you deal with them. You consider where they're at emotionally in the moment, and you adjust your actions. For example, if you've mistreated somebody, you tell them that before they feel so upset that they have to verbalize it. You have to listen to people's emotional expressions, not just their words. You have to listen in the present, instead of trying to think of what to say next, because if you're trying to do that, you're not in the present. And it also means you have to consider yourself worthy enough to express your feelings honestly and openly. When you're considerate like this, people are gonna feel respected and honored, even if they're not on the same page. All right, another problem I had in my life was that I was a total slave to my emotions. This made me feel horrible whenever I was mistreated, and I had no idea what it meant to let go of it. Right? How can you let go of something that feels really, really bad? And how can you deny those feelings if you're an honest person? Since I thought I was honest, I considered myself an honest person, I concluded that any horrible feelings I'm experiencing, they have to be real. But the worse those feelings were, the more I felt like I deserved them. And eventually I came to understand that feelings come from thoughts, and thoughts are actually only as real as you decide to be. Now, that didn't seem like that could ever be the truth, because I was believing a completely different story my entire life. Like the first like 37 years of my life. So I discovered meditation, and when I discovered what that was really about, it let me take back control of my emotions and thoughts. So what I do on a regular basis now, I practice this thing called Vipassana meditation, 20 minutes every day. This is how you do it. You sit quietly and you mindfully concentrate on the feeling of your breath leaving the tip of your nostril. So you just concentrate on that, and any kind of emotion or thought that comes, you just let it come, and you let it go. You consider it like a bus passing by. And what that does, right, every time you do that, and then you go back to concentrating on your breath. What that does is that it trains your subconscious to let go of these thoughts, instead of holding on. One of my favorite quotes in the world says, your mind is a great tool, just like a trash can is a great tool. But if you crawl inside the trash can and make it your home, it can lead to problems. And that's where I was at. I was in the trash can of my mind. So when you daily practice meditation, right, this silences the random horrible stories your mind can fabricate. And it does all kinds of great things because it lets you just 
It lets you go after your desires, and it lets you focus on things that you want to instead of reacting all the time against things you're encountering. This is me as a kid having a problem being hard on myself once in a while. When I was a kid, anything I did wrong was like a really, really big deal. What I didn't understand was that, you know, when your environment's really hard on you, for long enough and hard enough, you eventually become hard on yourself, which means you exaggerate the consequences of doing anything, which means you're scared of taking action more so than you should be, which means you don't want to take risks or try new things. And when people told me to stop being so hard on myself, I never understood what they meant. Because I didn't really have a good frame of reference. So what does not being hard on yourself mean? It means you don't feel worse about yourself just because you made a mistake. It means making mistakes can't ever hurt your overall disposition. And you appreciate that you learn from making mistakes. It means you prior prioritize spending time around people who aren't hard on themselves. And you avoid people who are hard on themselves. Because that's the only way your subconscious will understand the true reference point to enable you to understand what all this really feels like. And with all of these things, it's about practicing the actions and the behaviors that you know are right until your emotional state can catch up with your conscious ideal of the way you think it should be. Until that happens, it's going to feel like a struggle. You're going to feel massive resistance. You're not going to want to do it, whatever it is you think you should be doing. But it's worth it. Now the catch is that you won't feel that worth it until you come out on the other side of it. You have to trust the process instead of trusting your feelings about it.